I'm Adam Moss, and this is Moss Models. Welcome back. Today, we're going to go over the replacement for the override special function. Now, folks have used the override special function for a lot of interesting stuff in OpenTX, some of which is it's the only really way you can safely do it, some of which leaves me scratching my head sometimes. Uh, it's a very powerful function. It's a very dangerous function because override sends a value directly to RF. It does not obey anything that you've set in your outputs, any servo endpoints. So if you set your override to minus 100 and you set your servo endpoint to minus 75 because that's the physical limit of your carburetor and you flip the override on for your throttle cut, it's gonna try and drive it to minus 100. And that is why it doesn't exist in Ethos. Now, there's two main use cases for overrides. One is you want to send an arbitrary value to a channel. For example, you're controlling a flight controller. You've got multiple, more than three um, flight modes. So you want to set a set of arbitra selectable arbitrary values on the channel. The second one is you want to lock a channel's value to a specific value. Both of those have an answer in Ethos that does respect your output settings. So we're going to go over. For the first use case, we want to set some arbitrary channels. The answer is the Varmix. And the Varmix beats the pants off of setting uh, override for this because it's a default and then you pick an output channel, put output channel eight, and then you can just add selectable, and these can be selectable by any condition. So we can, let's just put these on switch G. Switch, so we'll, we're gonna put switch G up is minus 31. Switch G mid is Uh, let's say 40, and what we're going to do is we're just going to pull SF up and make that minus 100. Now let's go down. So you've got, and your default is 100. So switch you down is your default. You'll notice none of these are true, and these are priority. And then we can get minus 100. When we set it to 40, notice minus 100 is not doing anything here. These are a priority stack. The highest non-default value is always active. So if you want minus 100 to be a bailout, you go up here. And you notice what I did was I, for a momentary, I, pull, I hold it and then I tap. Because otherwise what you get is always active, the rest position. Because I let go of it. So hold it then tap. We'll set this to our, our bailout of minus 100. And then we'll go set, take this one, SG up, and we had that at minus 31. So now we've got a bailout. And that's the key piece. The, whenever you have a stack like this in Ethos, almost every single case, it's priority. If, even special functions, which don't really have a priority, but they do have a processing order, which is based on this. So the first one processes before the second one. Same thing for logic switches. Processing order, not so much priority, but it's always in order top to bottom. So th this, you can see the output is going. Each of my selectable values is set to the output. It's all controlled on one screen. One quick setting, you can add many of them. The only key piece is your selectable value. Your default weight can go to 200%, but your selectable values can only go to a plus minus 100 as of ethos 148. That's been corrected in one in 150, but we don't have 150 released yet. So that is how you send a set of selectable arbitrary values to a given channel. You can do this for a lot of stuff. It doesn't just have to be flight modes. Anytime you want to set, you want to switch sending specific values, you don't care about any sort of slow between the values, this works great. 
honestly, I set up my landing gear more often than not using a Varmex, not a Freemex, because arbitrary selectable values. I find it easier just to set two positions for my landing gear and, uh, and work with that rather than trying to use an input and a Freemex. The second use case, of course, is you want to override a channel. Last position. And we're going to do something silly. So when you want to override a channel, the first thing you do is you need to set a value. So we go down to special and pick maximum. Or you can pick minimum or you can pick zero. So pick minimum, so this is going to send minus 100. The active condition uh, will flip my throttle cut on. And what I'm going to do here is you've got, you can add, you've got, sorry. You can add curves, offsets, weight up, weight down, slow up, slow down, channel count. What we're going to do here, here though, is change the function type to lock. And what that means is it's going to take that and it's going to lock the channel at minus 100. So what we're going to do is we're going to do something silly. We're going to put this on elevators. So you've got your elevator and you lock it. My elevator mixer does nothing because I've locked the channel. This is the same thing for throttle cut. If you want to brew your own throttle cut, this is how you do it. I generally don't because I think the throttle cut in the throttle mixer is actually really good. It works really well and it's highly configurable. But if you want to do that override and lock out that channel, the function type lock is what you want. That locks out everything above it in the mixer stack. Now, I'm just going to show you something last position. We're going to leave that always on. I'm going to set something up on the slider. I'm going to set function type add. I'm going to set this to the elevator channel. You'll notice that I've still got that. And actually, that's that's correct. It locks out everything, not just what's above it. That is not what I was expecting. But worth that worth actually testing out. You learn something every time, and I just learned something. Lock locks everything, not just the stack, and that's actually safer than it would be if it just locked everything above it. But there you have it. The two usual uses for the override special function, sending arbitrary values to a channel, use a Varmix. You'll be a lot happier. It's way better than the override special function for that use case. There is one caveat there. Varmixes do not play well with other mixes on the same channel. So there is one case if, for example, I want my elevator I want to switch between an arbitrary, arbitrary value and a fully functional value. Normally that would be the lock mix because you usually only want to do it once. If you want to do it multiple times, you have to use an input selector, which really is a second var mix that selects between the two inputs. I'm not going to go through that because this is a really an edge case. I actually wrote a RC Group's blog on this a while back using a Varmix as a, an input selector. It's really, really cool. This is really not the right use case for it. That's more a case of, for F5J, you've got throttle on a switch, you know, but you want your midpoint switch adjustable. So you've got a Varmix for your throttle. One is off, one is all the way on. The middle point selects is left slider. So now your left slider, um, as the input, so your left slider controls the throttle output. Something like that works great for, input selector works great for. I don't recommend it for the arbitrary value. Use something like a lock type free mix instead. So that is how you replace the override mix in Ethos 
with a safer and more functional solution. It's a little bit more complex. It's not just at a special function, but it does a couple of things and it honors your output settings, which an override mix does not.